Well, today I'm doing what I have done in a segment before called Shopping Your Garden, I believe. I think I've actually done a couple of segments on this. And it's where you look for little volunteers in your own garden to pot up and use as topiary or in, in the case today, I'm gonna to use them as little tiny holiday trees or Christmas trees. And I've discovered a couple more of them. So I'm gonna show you my technique. And it's really so simple. And the nice thing is, you guys, these were just planted by the birds. I don't really want them to grow in place here. So ultimately, they would be removed anyway. So if my little project works, it's fine. But if it doesn't work, really, that's OK by me, too. So this little blue point juniper that has this pretty silvery gray, almost a sage color, is growing up in a little tuft of this creeping phlox in here and maybe some vinca minor too. So it is of a size and a maturity that I'm going to go ahead and dig it up. Trying to get as much of a root ball as I can without kind of disturbing the other things around it. And typically I have found that this has kind of a long tap root. So you can see there it kind of has a tap root. I really didn't get much of a root ball, but I got a good bit of its root. Again, if this really takes hold and grows in my little pot, that's fine. If it doesn't, then I have a cute little temporary Christmas tree. Now, I noticed over here a couple of other things. Stuart, if you don't mind following me. These are all th things that just go to seed in here. Like I've got a little holly here. And if I wanted to, I could dig that holly up and put that in a pot and make a little topiary out of it or just a little miniature little Christmas tree. I'll keep my eye on that one in case I want to use it in the future. And I think I spied, oh yeah, here it is, Stuart, over here. I probably got more of them and I'll discover them as I start to plant my bulbs. So here's another little baby one here. I see lots of little seedlings of Minoan lace around it. Now this one you can see I was able to get actually more of a root ball. So that's good. So I'm going to take these little guys to the back and I was telling Stuart, Stuart was noticing that this is just a regular shovel, but it's got a little bit smaller head on it. I call it a perennial shovel. I don't know that that's its official name, but I use this more than, than any other shovel that I own, and I just really like it. You can get it um, you can get it online, you can get it from your garden center, just about anywhere. But what I like about it is that because its head is a little bit smaller, I can really get into tight spaces a little bit better with it. So that's one of the reasons that I like it. Um, be a good Christmas gift for somebody. If you have a gardener in your life who likes to do that kind of thing. So now well, let's go to the back and I'll show you how I'm styling them and how I'm going to make little holiday trees out of them. Well, this is a holiday project. I'm not going to call it a Christmas project because you could obviously already start it now before Thanksgiving, but it kind of expands on a video that we did a while back about shopping your garden or digging up little volunteers in your own garden to pot up and make sweet tiny little trees. Now all of these are blue point junipers that the birds have planted in my yard and in a previous episode I potted them up. Now at the time all of them were top dressed in gravel like this one. But now, and they've been outside, and they have been happy outside, and they've put on growth outside. But now that I'm going to move them in, well, actually, they'll be outside until I'm ready to use them um, as a centerpiece or as a holiday display. I'm going to bring them in, so I'm going to get rid of the gravel that I've got on top. And if you guys, if you did this yourselves, then please send me a picture or put in the comments below 
that you have done this, which leads me to my question of the day. Have you tried potting up little volunteers of any kind of trees in your own garden that the birds or squirrels have planted, whether they're evergreens or deciduous, and tried potting them up in sweet little containers like this to bring indoors or to make a little, a little family of trees? So once I've removed most of the gravel, and this still has really good quality soil in it, I'm going to use some of my indispensable mosquito bits. Now, this time I'm gonna do it a little bit differently. Last year when I discovered them, all of my pots had already been top dressed in this moss, and I'll talk about it in a moment. But this year, I, I know how well it works against fungus gnats, so what I'm gonna do is put some down before I put the moss on because I, I prefer that it probably not show on top of this really sweet, soft surface. Okay, so I'm putting some of that down. And then I went to my florist. You can go to your florist. Sometimes you can find this at, at Oh, like a craft store like Michael's or Hobby Lobby, but I have found that the best quality and the best type of moss, and by the way, there are so many different types of moss that you can use for this project. I'm using primarily cushion moss and sheet moss. And again, I got this from my local florist. But you could also use reindeer moss. You might live in an area where you grow it yourself, where it's more moist and damp, and your environment is a little bit more productive in growing moss. You can use your own. So just whatever kind of uh, floats your boat, you can use that. Okay, so I've got my sweet little tree. This one has a pyramidal shape. This one, when it started out, it had a pyramidal shape, but it was really wonky, and I thought I want it to eventually become a round ball, and I'm gonna keep it pruned so that I can get that traditional uh, standard shape. And Stuart, if you would just so carefully turn around and show the one that's in the garden bed right there. Yes, I'm pointing to it, that ball on stem right there, Stuart. That one started out this same way. It went to seed or it was volunteered in place there. I let it stay there. It was growing in a traditional conical shape for quite a while and then I realized it had better potential to be a standard ball topiary than it did a conical shape. So I pruned it into that form and that's also what I decided to do with this small one, this small tabletop version over here. So knowing how well that one did, I am confident that this one will also get to be a big boy and really fill out. And, it, and when it gets very mature, I can leave it in a pot, I can put it in the ground, I can gift it to someone, whatever. But I wanted it in this form in this pot. So I top dressed this one in cushion moss. I top dressed this sweet tiny little one that's got kind of a different shape in this cute little, it's almost like a little olive pot. And then I also top dressed it in just sheet moss. I removed the gravel like I did with this one. And now this one again, I've put down, and Stuart, let's remember, we're not always good about this. Let's remember to put a link to these mosquito bits to prevent fungus gnats. And you want me to hold that up again for you? There you go. Um, so, <laughs> thank you, Stuart. Sometimes my timing isn't Stuart's time. So anyhow, on top of my little conical Christmas tree, I'm also going to put some moss. And on this one, you can take a big, kind of a big piece like this. And I, by the way, you guys, whenever I use this moss, I always hydrate it first because when you get it, it will be in dried out, desiccated little clumps like this. You can see how on the back side it's really dried out. But I want to be able to mold it in place and really green up. And so I always soak it, soak it in some water 
which makes it then much more malleable to form fit on a pot. So I'm going to use this. And the reason that I wanted to make sure that I put these mosquito bits, which work against mosquitoes, but also against fungus gnats, in these pots is because I really want to keep this moss looking really fresh and green and alive, which means I'm going to be watering these, these pots a lot, which then can attract fungus gnats. So I am trying to prevent at the outset that from happening. So I'm just going to put some more moss in here. And if I do say so myself, that looks pretty sweet. Now how cute would that be in a table setting or at someone's uh, play setting? I think it's very, very dear. Or as a tiny little Christmas tree on your nightstand, if you wanted to have a little Christmas tree on your nightstand. Now some of you will say probably, won't all, isn't all of that watering going to damage these blue junipers because they don't need so much water? And not really, because these are in very small pots. They've got good drainage. I happen to know that being inside in that dry air, they will dry out very quickly. So I'm not concerned about overwatering them in these tiny little pots. Now, if you don't have any living volunteers, living little blue junipers that have cropped up in your own garden beds, here's a cheat. And I have done this before too. You can just take a cutting of a larger shrub and I took this off of one of my junipers in the back that was a little bit more mature. You can remove some of the bottom needles to make like a little trunk. So then you've got a little Christmas tree. At that point then, you could just insert it into the pot and you have what looks like a little Christmas tree, but it's really just a little cutting. And it will stay fresh and last really long like this, you guys. So if you wanna make just some temporary little Christmas trees like that, you can. It also looks really cute to take something like this and just tuck it into the ribbon of your package because again, it looks like a tiny little Christmas tree. I think really, really dear, or you could rest it on top of your napkin at a place setting at the holidays. You guys have probably done some of this yourself. I'm not telling you anything you don't already know, but there's a myriad, uh, a myriad ways that you can kind of fake creating a little Christmas tree. So that is another tip. Now, when I first started to do these, I had seen in an old Martha Stewart living a project that I had saved and saved in my tear sheet file for Christmas. And this was it. And I thought it was just so sweet. And because I'm all about decorating at the holiday with natural, sorry, Stewart, was it there a glare there? Maybe you can, can you see it a little bit better now? Okay, this was my project. And you can see how my blue point junipers kind of speak to this project in Martha Stewart Living. Now, what I also just thought was so charming were these little woodland creatures at the bottom. You catching that, Stuart, without the glare? Okay, those little wooden creatures. Now, of course, Martha Stewart had them in antique bronze, and they were probably very, very valuable. And I don't have that, and I don't want to spend that kind of that kind of money on something that I won't use that much. So I'm going to fake it. So just like you can fake a Christmas tree, you can also fake these little woodland creatures. And that, by the way, is some of you who have watched our videos before know that on Saturdays we have a siren that goes off at noon every Saturday. So it's, it's, it's kind of a comforting sound, actually, because it remind you that it's Saturday, it's the weekend, it's kind of fun. Anyhow, it will go off momentarily. But what I did was I ordered these little woodland creatures from Amazon, and I'll put a link below. 
and they consist of little bunnies and a cute little fox and a fawn and a baby fawn and they're really sweet. Now they come like this. They're just plastic and they come like this. So what I am doing to make them simulate the look of these bronze metal shapes is that I'm just spray painting them. So I am spray painting them with either a flat burnished amber, which has a little bit of a sheen, or you could use really any kind of espresso satin, really whatever you've got that kind of copies this look. And I just spray them in, I put them in a, in a cardboard box, I spray them. When they dry then, they will all be ready to take up residence in my little Christmas trees. Now, I probably need two sets if I want to also create habitat for these tiny little ones. Now, you could also spray paint these in maybe a faux stone or a brass or whatever. I just happen to have that already in my spray can inventory but you can see how fun that will look. Now if, probably for this fall, I will leave them like this. And around Thanksgiving, I'll leave them like this. I may find some tiny little pine cones that I will use and tuck in the moss, but I will leave them like this. Boy, there's all sorts of activity going on today. That's a Southwest Airline plane getting ready to land. Uh, but I'll probably leave like them like this until the holidays. Now, after Thanksgiving, when Christmas is getting ready to roll around, that's when I will dress it up to look more like this. That's when I will probably wrap some packages in that faux bois wrapping paper. I can make it if I can't find any of it. If I wanted to suspend some icicles like that, I found these also on Amazon. I don't know that my guys are gonna be quite tall enough for this, but if I really wanted to simulate that look, I could, I could get a larger juniper and I could hang all sorts of these icicles off of it, which is kind of fun. Or I could use them on my big tree. And then what they also, it looks like she's got to kind of make it look like snow at the base. I don't know what she has, but I could take some fake snow, and I'm, again, I'm not going to do it now because it's not Christmas time yet, but I could spray the surface of this moss with some Christmas snow. I could even give a tiny little dusting on top of the needles of these tiny sweet little trees, and I think that would be absolutely precious. Put them all on a tray like this. You could put more greenery below. You could put some of those tiny little packages and I think it would just be so dear. And let's add up how much this project cost. So my little trees cost me nothing. Um, my terracotta pots I already had. So even if I bought them, they would be inexpensive. I bought, I had two large bags of moss for all of my trees and also to top dress lots of amaryllis that I'm getting ready to pot up. I think two large bags was about $10. And I got all of these little woodland creatures and they were $12. And then I just used some spray paint that I already had, but if you bought the spray paint new, it would be about five to $6 a can. So you can see that I got this really, really high end Martha Stewart look and I barely spent anything. And if I had tried to go to a florist, first of all, I don't think I could have found it. Secondly, I think it would have cost an arm and a leg. So if you guys are gonna try this, if you're gonna try any version of it, please let me know. I would love to get your interpretation of what this little forest could look like. And I've got this little tree here, one of the trees that I just dug up 
I'm going to secure it in this little faux bois concrete pot, and this might be a gift for someone. I think that's ever so dear. So there you go. There is my holiday project for today. I want to close uh, with, with one little comment. I, I get, you guys send me sweet notes all the time, and I don't always acknowledge them. So if you have ever sent me a sweet note, Stuart and I want you to know how much we appreciate it. We read them, we share them with one another, we sometimes share them with other people. And this one just arrived yesterday. Sometimes you guys send me little gifts. Uh, this one came from Cheryl McClendon in Brentwood, Tennessee. So thank you, Cheryl. I appreciated your kind words, and Stuart and I, I promise we appreciate you guys more than you appreciate us. So have a great weekend, and if you try this project, please let me know. Well, here you go. Here's my fashion ensemble for today. If you're interested, if not, just go on to the next one. This pea coat comes from Sundance. It's leather, and it was a gift from my mother-in-law many years ago. It's one of my very favorite pieces of clothing. I, I, it's near and dear to me, and it makes me feel warm when I put it on, not just because it's a coat, but because it makes me think of her. Um, my top. This sweater, some of you who have followed me for a long time probably recognize it. It's from Sheen, and I just, I really love it. It's got kind of a mod 60s vibe, I think. Uh, my belt is Michael Kors. I like the um, really glossy metallic gold buckle, which matches my earrings. And my earrings are some of those marvelous hoops from Atrios. I'll try to remember to put a link, um, a link below. My britches. My britches are just an old, old pair of Land's End jeans that I've had forever and a day, and I updated them just by cutting them off and fraying them at about ankle length, which leads me to my ankle boots, which are, I believe I got these at Nordstrom Rack years ago. In terms of, of boots that aren't garden boots, I really like booties or Chelsea boots. That style I think the best. So there you go. There's my fashion ensemble du jour.